Hello and welcome to this lesson on footprinting. In this lesson we will be covering the following topics. What is footprinting? Why do we do footprinting? What are the goals of footprinting? And finally, what tools do we use? Let's begin. What is footprinting? Well, footprinting is the first phase of a penetration test. It is also called reconnaissance and you may see this phase called that in other text videos or other literature on the topic of penetration testing. At the root of footprinting, the core of what we're trying to achieve is it allows a hacker to gain information about the target system. So this whole phase of the penetration test is about gathering and gaining as much information as possible. Footprinting can be both active or passive, uh, meaning that if it is active, you're actually querying devices or endpoints or um, systems and services within the target environment directly and you can be um, logged. But if you're passive, you're basically using a publicly available information on the internet which actually often doesn't even come close or near the target environment. And I think this sentence sums it up quite nicely. The, it is the process of accumulating data regarding a specific target for a purpose of finding ways to exploit the target in further phases. The key here is that this phase is accumulating data to find ways to exploit the target in further phases. Let's take a look at why we actually do footprinting. Well, to perform or prevent an attack, we need to gather as much information as possible and then look for weaknesses. And the best analogy that I can think of is that of a bank robbery. And I sincerely hope none of you are going to rob a bank, but it's a good analogy to use. So let's just say you're a robber and who wants to rob a bank. You're not going to walk into the bank and rob it on day one. Um, you're probably going to spend a few weeks maybe visiting it as a customer, looking at where the security cameras are, how many guards they have, what time they open, what time they close, etc, etc. So that when you do actually rob the bank, you have a greater chance of success because you'll know what you'll be up against. Footprinting is pretty much the same thing. It is also a very good way to build a lot of information and put that in a database about the prospective target which helps in the reporting phase at the end of the penetration test because it shows the customer how much information about their environment is actually publicly available and something that they might may want to cut down on it may not necessarily have a weakness but they may not want all that information out in the public we also use footprinting to learn about all aspects of the prospective target security posture, what systems they have in place, what applications are running, who works there, how many people work there, in what locations do the people work, who supplies them, who are their customers, etc. etc. There is no such thing as too much information during the footprinting phase. So we try and gather as much information as possible because you never know when that would be useful further down the line in the penetration test. Footprinting also helps us uh, get as much information as possible without actually alerting the target that somebody is investigating them. And this is especially true during the passive reconnaissance phase, uh, not so much in the active reconnaissance phase, uh, because the customer is unaware that you are investigating them because you are actually interrogating publicly available information which is nowhere near their environment. So they wouldn't necessarily have any view that somebody is actually investigating them and gathering information about them. Let's take a look at the goals of footprinting. To get the big picture. I think that sentence sums it up quite nicely. So the ultimate goal of footprinting is to get a holistic view and as much information as possible about a specific target. Why? because it helps you set up the path that you will take to execute the attack in a later phase. Um, <clears throat> an example is if the customer does not run any Oracle systems, you're not going to try an Oracle exploit during the penetration phase of the penetration test. 
It also helps you focus your energies in the later phases on the possible attack vectors. So that pretty much go ties in with the previous statement that you are going to use footprinting to formulate a plan of attack down the line. What information do we ideally we want at the end of this phase? Well, let's look at a few of those. You'd like to have a list of devices and their roles as well as their configurations. You'd like to have a network map, if possible, of their internal network, their external network, any wireless networks that they may have. You'd like a list of applications with their version numbers. And you'd also like a list of people that work for or at the target that you may use in a social engineering attack down the line. Remember, any information about the target, no matter how insignificant it may seem right now, could prove to be a vital piece down the line. Let's take a look at some of the tools. During passive reconnaissance, here are some of the tools that you could use to gather a whole bunch of publicly available information on your target. WHOIS. Interrogating a WHOIS database will give you a plethora of information about the target. The, the date the domain was registered, who the registrar was, possibly a telephone number, a physical address, etc. etc. DNS is probably the tool that you will use the most during this footprinting phase because it helps you map out the network and helps you identify possible applications that the target has running. Google, Google is always your friend. Just googling the target will give you a whole host of information and some of these could include the social media accounts where you can find out a lot about who works there, what kind of business they're doing, who they interact with, etc, etc. It will also give you access to their job sites. So if you see that your target is advertising for .NET developers, you can pretty much surmise that they're running some .NET applications in the environment. Press releases. Often companies like to give out press releases on technologies that they've adopted and this could also help in the, in the passive reconnaissance phase on mapping out what technologies are in use at your target site. Obviously their public website itself will give you enough information about who they are, what they're about and what services they offer and could also give you information about what technology the actual website is running which you could use in the later phase to compromise the website. Recon NG is a tool in Kali Linux and that pretty much uses DNS to pretty much map out all of the information that's on the slide. And then finally Netcraft is a tool on the internet which you can use to interrogate specific websites and will tell you what technology the website's running and where it's located, what its IP address is, etc, etc. Let's look at some tools on active footprinting. DNS. Well, we said DNS was a passive reconnaissance tool, but it could also be an active reconnaissance tool. Sometimes you'll be asked to do a penetration test from within an organization, and in that case you would be interrogating the internal DNS servers, which would then be logged by the organization. So it would be an active uh, reconnaissance step. Nmap. Nmap is a tool that you can use internally and externally. And what Nmap does is it scans a range of IP addresses, finds live hosts on those IP addresses, and you can also use it to find open ports on those live hosts so that you can identify what services or applications are running on those hosts. Sparta is also a very similar to Nmap, but it's a, a lot more user friendly and is a tool in Kali Linux that also interrogates direct environmental services and applications of the target, so those could be logged. Internal network shares, um, if you're doing an internal penetration test and you're sitting on the internal network, literally just enumerating the internal network shares of an environment will give you a whole host of information that is quite easily available. And finally, public facing internal services or sites, things like webmail, the internet, etc. Um, so as an example, if you can see that the customer is using Outlook Web Access for mail, 
you can pretty much buy the look of Outlook Web Access, determine if it's running Exchange 2007 or Exchange 2013 as an example. Also the VPN that it's using, um, obviously the VPN would be a specific technology. So you could see, is it a 40 gate v VPN? Is it a um, open VPN? And the same for the internet. If the internet's um, homepage or the logging page is a SharePoint login, you can pretty much surmise that the customer is running SharePoint for their internet. And that pretty much concludes this lesson on footprinting. But there's one thing I'd like you to bear in mind before we end the lesson. It is important to remember that if you find any weaknesses, you do not exploit them during this phase. This phase is only about collecting as much information as possible about the target.